Hello everybody, this is Tom and welcome to my review of the Voxelab Proxima 2K Mono 3D Resin Printer. In today's review, I'm going to unbox the printer, give my first impressions, go over the specifications, try out a few test prints, and then give you my final thoughts. I hope this interests you, and if it does, please stick around. The printer arrived on my doorstep in good shape and well packaged. Inside the box, I found all the accessories and paperwork individually wrapped, and everything was surrounded with nice, sturdy foam packaging. Provided with the printer are two spatulas, one plastic and one steel, a couple of rubber gloves, a quick start guide with a USB thumb drive, and a bag that contained some small wrenches and extra screws. Once I was able to get the blue tape off of the machine uh, that held the lid to the machine, underneath the lid I found the build plate and the resin vat, also well packaged in some protective foam. Now that I have the printer out of all of its packaging and set up on my desk, I have to admit, it is one sharp looking printer. I really like the color choice. The silver and orange really looks nice and somewhat professional looking there on my workbench. I like that almost everything on this printer is made out of metal. The chassis is steel as well as the arm that the linear rail rides on. The resin vat and the build plate are cast aluminum. Before we get started, let's go over some specifications. The Voxelab Proxima sports a 2K monochrome screen with a pixel resolution of 2560 by 1620, which gives it an effective pixel size of 50 microns or 0.05 millimeters. The benefit of using a monochrome screen over a traditional RGB LCD screen is that monochrome screens have a longer service life and without the RGB filter interfering with the light transmission, it takes a shorter amount of time to expose each layer of your print. The screen measures 6 inches diagonally, which gives you a print volume of 130 by 82 by 155 millimeters, which is expected in this category of monochrome 2K screens. They all seem to have this build volume or something very similar to it. The Voxelab Proxima uses linear rails to control the Z-axis, which is supposed to allow it to print much smoother and it uses a free-floating ball joint style leveling system to make leveling the build plate easier. I really like how the resin vat is held down with screws. And what I mean by that is that it uses two screws to hold the vat down and you don't have to remove those screws all the way in order to slide the vat out when you need to change your resin. A lot of other printers either require you to remove the screws completely or they have wing nuts or some other type of nuts that you have to take off of two studs and those loose nuts and loose screws could easily fall into the resin or get lost or make some other type of mess. Around back of the printer you will find the power inlet as well as the power switch. I know that some people have an issue with the power switch being on the back. But having grown up in a period where most appliances and computers had power switches that you had to fumble around in the back for, this really wasn't a big issue for me. I was very happy to see that the USB port had been located on the side of the machine towards the front. I feel like this is the most convenient location that they could put the USB port even better than putting it in the front of the machine. It's a lot more ergonomic this way, and it keeps the USB drive from protruding out into your workspace. The screen is somewhat small, but that is to be expected on such a small desktop machine. What's more concerning to me is the size of the lettering and font that's used on the screen. It can be difficult to read at times, and sometimes I find myself leaning in really close to the machine just to be able to see what I uh, am trying to do as I navigate. Speaking of navigation, it is very intuitive and the buttons are large. As I used the machine, I didn't have any trouble getting around inside the menus and the submenus and using all the different functions of the machine. 
Before I'm able to start printing anything, I have to first level the build plate. And the procedure to do so is fairly easy. It is found in the quick start guide and is well written and very easy to follow. I decided to go with the Voxelab gray ABS like resin for this print. I figure what better brand of resin to use than the manufacturer's own resin. So I'm hoping to get really good results with this Voxelab resin. I plugged in the provided USB drive expecting to find a test file that was already pre-sliced with optimal settings for this printer, but unfortunately I did not find that. There were test files on the thumb drive, but they were just in the STL format. I ended up having to slice those files myself before I was able to print them. I do like how when you do load a sliced file with the USB drive onto the Voxelab Proxima that it does show a small thumbnail of each of the files that are available to print. So once I loaded the file and pressed the play button, the printer took over and it printed the test file. The resulting print was a skeletonized deer figurine that was very, very delicate and detailed. Most of the features were very well defined, with some evidence of overcuring in some areas. This can be remedied by tuning my slicer settings. With the manufacturer provided test print out of the way, I decided to print something a little bit more quantifiable. So I chose the Amerilabs Town 3D printable benchmark that you can find on Amerilabs.com. Initially, when I pulled it out of the resin, I was unimpressed with what appeared to be the lack of fidelity in this print. But after I cleaned it and cured it, oh my goodness, take a look at how detailed this benchmark is. You can make out all the tiny windows in the buildings and all of the writing on all the faces of the structures. The checkerboard patterns are super crisp and a majority of the most minute details printed on this example. Now this benchmark is designed to push your 3D printer to the limit. So it was not unexpected that not everything printed out perfectly. But as you can see here, most things did. And I was very impressed with the results of this test. Now that I got all the testing out of the way, I wanted to see how this thing actually prints some models and miniatures. So I went onto the internet and found a couple that I thought would be interesting to print. First is this wood elf warrior I found on Thingiverse, created by R. Gautier. The reason I chose him is because he is very highly detailed and he is printed at the height of about 35 millimeters. Next I found this Bounty Hunter miniature by Satunger Miniatures on MyMiniFactory.com. And the reason I chose this was A, it was a 75mm miniature, and B, Mandalorian. I loaded both the pre-supported models in Chitubox, and I played around with some hollowing and drainage hole placement on the Mandalorian statue, but ultimately it didn't seem to really matter. I sliced them, dropped them onto my USB drive, plugged it in to the 3D printer, and let it print for the next four and a half hours. The cleaning and curing process is the same as it was with all the other models. I ended up having to break out a toothbrush and get in all the nooks and crannies on these particular models. And I had come to figure out that the black light I was using for curing must not be putting out the right wavelength of light because it really wasn't doing a good job. So I had to resort to using my wife's gel nail hardening device and that ended up curing the models really well. After the printer performed so well in the benchmark I was looking forward to seeing how it was going to print these miniatures and I was not disappointed. Take a look at this wood elf. You can see all of the tiny features in his feet, the veins and the leaves that make up his kilt armor. Everything printed out beautifully, even his pointy little ears. I did have a support failure on the right arm, so that part didn't end up printing correctly. But the rest turned out beautifully. 
Switching my focus to the Mandalorian, once again, it printed great. Since it is a larger size miniature, you can get even finer details in all of the uh, accessories that he carries and his armor and clothing. One thing that struck me is the lack of visible layer lines. And I don't know if that had to do with the way I was post-processing with a toothbrush or if that's just how well this printer prints. But once again, I am highly impressed with the results. So here's my summary of the Voxelab Proxima 2K Mono 3D printer. This is a well-built, good-looking machine. The materials of construction are excellent, and the design and color scheme are quite elegant. The high-resolution screen, coupled with the print profile in Chitubox, seems to produce excellent results, not only with the manufacturer-supplied test files, but also with files that I have imported from various other sites on the internet. The menus are intuitive and easy to navigate. And at $209 shipped with Amazon Prime at the time of the recording of this video, this printer is the best price that you can find for a 2K monochromatic printer. If I had to complain about anything, it would probably be the small size of the screen and the hard to read text that you find on that screen. But this isn't a problem that's unique to this particular brand or model. Many other printers in this price range use the same screen with the same small text and font. Due to the combination of price, construction quality, and print quality, I can comfortably recommend this 3D printer to anybody that is looking for a decent 2K Mono resin printer. I feel like this would be a great printer for beginners and for experienced printers alike that need something that is compact and that produces repeatable quality prints. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Voxelab Proxima 3D printer. I honestly believe you won't find a better printer for this price. As always, everything featured in this video will be linked down in the description below. Feel free to like and comment on this video, and if you like this sort of content, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when any future videos come out. I want to wish everybody a happy and safe new year, Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.